Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I have entered, but nobody else seems to be there. Uh, sir, uh, even I am live. I cannot see myself. Can you see? Yeah, that's what I'm checking. I think the um, video is working. Fran is also, also live. Wait, I will talk. Take two minutes. So for the video, I love you. Yeah, now I think my mic is unmuted. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Right. You're totally audible. Sure, sure. Okay, fine. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I can see I can see Karan as well. Yes, sir. Uh, so I think we'll start now. Good evening, everyone. Here we welcome you to the fourth edition of our webinar. We will have a detailed insight on the authentic interpretation of the platform. I'd like to introduce today's speaker. He is none other than Mr. Silesh Gandhi. He is our former Info, uh, Central Information Commissioner and an RBI activist. Mr. Shailesh Gandhi is a first generation entrepreneur and a, and a distinguished alumnus awardee of IIT Bombay. He has been awarded the Nani Palikwala Civil Liberties Award of the MRI Award. He is passionately pursuing the cause of evolving ways for a time bound justice delivery system and improving governance systems. It must be noted that he has a record of disposing over 20,000 cases in three years of nine months and has ensured that most cases were decided in less than 90 days. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for this arranging this, and I'm thankful to all the participants also for taking interest in RTI. Uh, the first transparency law worldwide was made in Sweden on 2nd December 1776. After that, for about 150 years, no country had such a law. And now about 120 countries have laws of a similar nature. There are three names this is known by worldwide. One is Freedom of Information, FOI, Access to Information, ATI, and Right to Information, RTI. All these are synonymous terms for transparency laws. Now let's look at the need or what is the validity of this law. We claim India is the largest democracy in the world. 
when i was in school i was taught that democracy is defined as rule of the people for the people by the people but no average citizen of india feels like that if you go to a government office you don't feel like a ruler more often than not an average citizen when he or she goes to a government office comes out feeling angry humiliated and frustrated so then how is this a democracy if you are not the ruler of this nation people say we are a democracy because we have a reasonably fair system of elections by which we are able to change leaders governments representatives and so on i would submit to you that having a fair system of elections and a constitution are necessary conditions for a democracy but are on the complete set of conditions the heart and essence of democracy is the concept that each individual citizen is a sovereign in her own right and she gives a part of the sovereignty to the state in return for which she gets the rule of law sovereignty of the individual citizen is the heart of democracy you eat human being deserves respect because he or she is a human being and because you are a citizen of a nation you deserve to be recognized as a ruler of the nation the government belongs to you to me to each individual in hindi we use the word lokshahi lokshahi can only have one meaning logo ki shahin shahi any one of the citizen when he or she goes to a government office should feel like a bachcha or a beggar when i was talking giving this talk at a college one young student got up and said sir aap baat se to badi achhi karte hain bade chakni chupdi karte hain sabko bachcha bana diya beggar bana diya agar aise 130 crore bachcha aur beggar se bharat chal sakta hai kya and i asked the audience chal sakta hai and everybody said no nahi chal sakta hai तो फिर एक कैसी लोकशाही की बात है सो आई सेट फेयर इनाफ लेट एस थिंक ऑफ अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट पर्सपेक्टिव आर देर एनी कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड वेर अूमन बींग इज रिस्पेक्टेड एंड आई लाइक टू गिव यू टू एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर दिस द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका आई एम नॉट सींग एवरीथिंग इन यूएस इज गुड बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी दे हैव अ टू सेंचुरी लीड ओवर आस an immigrant from india pakistan bangladesh china to the united states if he or she has applied for the citizenship of united states or green card which is permission to work there they will very easily pick up a phone to ask about the status of their application is when is an application likely to be considered are there any defects and so on and so forth and 99% he or she will get a perfectly rational answer from the other side of the telephone you are all first rate citizens of india if you apply for change of address in your ration card and you don't have not received a response most of us will not pick up the phone to ask what is the status of your application even if you go to the rationing office your chances are 50 50 of getting a reasonable response to your queries to your doubts and so on human beings deserve respect because they are human beings that is the fundamental right fundamental identification fundamental right to dignity of a human being the second example i'd like to give you is a story you all heard mohandas karamchand gandhi got inside that train in south africa what 25 years back he had a first class ticket but there was a white man there who objected and the railway official came and put mr gandhi outside the compartment in the same story is written that mohandas karamchand gandhi complained about what had happened to him by a telegram and in 12 to 14 hours a railway official came and put him on the next train think of the significance of this 125 years back mohandas karamchand gandhi was not a citizen of south africa Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi by South African law was a second rate human being at that time because he was not a white man he was a brown man therefore he was a second rate human being despite this he makes a complaint and the system responds to him i need not tell you that in case you file a 
complain to the Indian Railways now, forget 12 to 14 hours. In 12 to 14 days, if you get an acknowledgement, you will think you are lucky. Respect for the individual, and that is why this whole issue of right to information. It is to get respect for the individual citizen, to empower the individual citizen, to make a recognition of the fact that you own the nation. Every Indian citizen owns the nation. You are the owner, you are the government. The government is your representative who is taking decisions on your behalf. But you are the most important person, the sovereign, the ruler of this nation. The elected representative or the public servant is also a Baksha or Begum like you. So it's a negotiation of equals. It is not as if the government servant is sitting there and you are sitting down there. That is the equation that right to information tends to change. Now we'll take a look at the law. Brief history within India. Within India, the first recognition of right to information being a fundamental right and an extremely important right was made by Justice Matthew in 1975 in the Rad Narayan versus Indira Gandhi case, where he's given a brilliant exposition, which all of us recognize. In that, he said, the only bar to right a citizens' right to information should be in the interest of national security. Then various things kept happening. In the late 80s, a first draft was prepared of the RTI bill. But the first people's movement was started in rural Rajasthan by three very unique people. Aruna Roy, who gave up her IAS job to work in rural Rajasthan with citizens. Nikhil Day, a lawyer trained in the United States who came back because he wanted to work with people. And Shankar Singh, a local Rajasthani who belonged to the village, Dev Dungri village, they stayed in a hut and taught people the meaning of democracy, that they were the rulers of this democracy. These people realized that they needed information for suspected corruption, for suspected denial of fair wages and so on. And they went to a government office and asked for to see the papers in the muster rolls. This was denied. And then there was a dharna and a big agitation came about and it became a national movement recognized across the country. The first state to have an RTI Act was Tamil Nadu in 1997. And after that, various states for frame such laws. The National Act was passed in May 2005 by Parliament and it became effective from 12th October, Vijaya Dashmi, 2005. And now it's a national law applicable all over the nation. I would like you to understand some of the key provisions of this law. Anybody can understand this law. This is an extremely simple law. And if you understand the law, you understand your right and the importance of this. Uh, next slide, please, Farhan. Next slide. Farhan, any difficulty in changing the slide? Yeah, okay. The preamble. The preamble is the heart and soul of the act which says what is the objective. Let's read this together. Whereas the Constitution of India has established democratic republic, and whereas democracy requires an informed citizenry and transparency of information which are vital to its functioning, and also to contain corruption and to hold governments and their instrumentalities accountable to the governed. And whereas revelation of information in actual practice is likely to conflict with other public interests, including efficient operations of the governments, optimum use of limited fiscal resources, and the preservation of confidential or sensitive information. And whereas it is necessary to harmonize these conflicting interests while preserving the paramountcy of the democratic idea. This was the promise. Parliament recognized that there would be some difficulties in parting with information, but it recognized the right of the individual citizen who is the ruler of this nation to access this information so that the functioning of the government is improved, corruption is curbed, and all of this can actually happen with the right to information. Next slide, please. What is information? 
the description is given the information means any material etc 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 in simple terms what exists is information i want you to understand there are people who use rti for a number of years and don't understand this fundamental concept this is rti is not right to interrogation it is right to information what is information information is what exists on the files on the papers in the computers to give an example if you were to say what is the meaning of the rti act nobody is obliged to give you any information they will say there is no such information unless there is a on file a document that says what is right to information you ask for a clarification of a law if you say if i apply for this job will i get it that is not information because that requires some government officer to make a decision on some matter which is not information information is what exists to give another example supposing an illegal building is in place and you ask whether a building exists on plot number so and so if on record there is no building the government officer will tell you there is no building on and that's not saying false it's false information he is so obliged to give you the information as on record next slide please for next slide next slide can you change the slide please he is doing sir i think some difficulty in changing the slide i have changed it sir which slide uh, do you want so we've done this 2f i'm seeing 2f the next one after 2f 2h right information yeah yes sir but i'm only seeing 2f 2h right 2h yeah but i'm only seeing 2f i'm not seeing 2h okay it has been changed sir okay to access who has to give information one second let me i will show the participants can see this yes sir yeah right who has to give information the law defines public authority public authorities are supposed to give information a b and c top of institutions which are what we normally call government state governments central governments panchayats municipal corporations all these are covered under a b and c also if any body is made specifically by law of parliament for example the sri gurudwara prabandhak committee has been established by law made by parliament and therefore it's a public authority under the rti act then it also says those what we normally would call private institutions which have substantial finance from the government or which is made by notification made by government so these are also public authorities so all private public partnerships are public authorities as defined in the law and therefore are all obliged to give information the key principle is government belongs to you and me the money in the government treasury also belongs to us all the assets of the government belongs to each citizen of india yeah now it's same to 2h it also belongs to each citizen of india you own that information everything in the government all cars all planes all guns all property of the government belongs to you individually once when i was talking of this some student asked me the student said mr gandhi can i take the car home government car home if i like to because if i like the car and if i own it why can't i take it home and we all said no you can't take it home he said then why not 
The reason is very simple because it's in partnership with 130 crore other Indians. So if you take that car away, you are depriving the other 130 crore people of their rights over a certain place. But, and this is important to understand, all the information on the files, in the computers, in cupboards, also belongs to you. And therefore, you have a right over that information. And therefore, the default mode is information belongs to you and it must be given to you. And there's a very famous slogan of the RTI movement, which says, Hamara paisa, hamara hisa. Paisa mera hai, to, kyoki sarkar meri hai, paisa mera hai. To, fir, har suchna meri hai. Next, please. Next slide. Can you change the slide? Yes, thank you. Right to information. What does right to information mean? Right to information means the right to information accessible under this act, which is held by or under the control of any public authority and includes the right to. Information which is held by a public authority is information that can be accessed through right to information and includes the right to inspection of work, document records. You can inspect files. You can inspect records. You can inspect work also. You can say you want to inspect a road which has a lot of potholes because the government record may not show potholes. Taking notes, extracts or certified copies of documents or records. This is the most used right, which is to take photocopies of records or to take notes and extracts from these. Taking certified samples of material. You can also take samples of material. Supposing you feel that a government hospital has got fake medicines or outdated medicines. You can take samples and get it tested. If you think that the food grains in a government go down are of very poor quality, you can take a sample and get it tested. So all these are included in your right to information. I'd like to tell you of an interesting instance. A young 20-year-old student in the suburbs of Mumbai, he said, I want to inspect a public hospital, a government hospital. He went and inspected that and discovered that some costly equipment was not existing. Some equipment that was there was not being used. And I believe the hospital improvement is happening now. Next slide, please. The most important section of the RTI Act is Section 3. It's the shortest. Subject to the provisions of this Act, all citizens shall have the right to information. Who can have right to information? All citizens of India. Therefore, organizations, legal entities, companies, NGOs cannot get right to information. It belongs to all citizens. But it needs a local standing. Can any information be denied? If it, you own the information in your house, can somebody tell you except your mother if she is there not to open a cupboard? It's your house, you can open a cupboard, you can open any drawer and take a look at it. Therefore, can any citizen be denied any information which is with public authorities? The law says, subject to the provisions of this act. Therefore, only in the provisions of this act, any information which can be denied must be mentioned. Unless it is mentioned, default mode is you own the information and it must be given to you. In the RTI Act, there are only two sections which cover information that shall not be given, or what are called exemptions. Section 8.1, which we'll deal with in some detail, and Section 9. Section 9 covers copyright, so I'm not dealing with that. For example, if you ask the censor board and said you want a copy of the DVD of some commercial film, it will not be given to you because it will infringe somebody's copyright. Therefore, Section 9 is about copyrights, which is a rare case. Section 8.1, we'll... But if it is not mentioned in Section 8.1, information has to be given to you. Next slide. Section 4 is the heart of the RTI Act. What does it say? In criticality, every public authority shall maintain all its records duly catalogued and indexed in a manner and form which facilitates the right to information under this Act and ensure that all records that are appropriate to be computerized are within a reasonable time and subject to availability of resources computerized and connected through a network all over the country. 15 years since the RTI Act was passed. But this has not actually happened. 
and let me tell you let me share a dream with you what is possible people say it is difficult for us to access information to locate files and so on and so forth which is true an average citizen goes to a standard government office to inquire about his application or representation or complaint and it's quite often that the citizen will be told file name is that so rupya diya to file mil jayega 500 rupya diya to record change ho jayega 1000 rupya diya to record nikal diya jayega 2000 diya to file gayab ho jayegi aur thode lakh rupaye de diye to mantralay mein to maharashtra mein aag lag gayi thi नीरव मोदी के इनकम टैक्स पेपर्स इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट में टर्माइट खा गए हैं ऑल ऑफ दिस कैन चेंज इन द नेम ऑफ कंप्यूटराइजेशन एंड डिजिटाइजेशन यर अ सिंपल प्रोपोजिशन आई एम पुटिंग बिफोर यू ऑल गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसेज हैव कंप्यूटर्स ऑन विच दे डू ऑल द टाइपिंग दे यूज अ कंप्यूटर मोर इज एन इलेक्ट्रिक टाइप राइटर दैन अ कंप्यूटर एवरीथिंग इज टाइप फ्रॉम दैट ऑल ऑफिशियल कम्युनिकेशन आर टाइप फ्रॉम दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ taking a print out and moving a paper file which travels physically it has to travel to from office to office just imagine if this was electronically transferred electronic filing was there things would be far more efficient changes and corruption would go down i can bet it will go down by 30% and this is what we must all insist that real digitization means working only on computers paperlessly it can be done few places it has been done for example the passport offices have gone completely paperless i had done it in my office when i was an information commissioner it's not difficult if it is done the efficiency increase would be phenomenal and corruption would actually get curbed next slide please uh there is a message over here of law essentials if you remove that i can't see the bottom part of the slide is it possible you can remove this all attendees are requested to type in your name and email address as you can shift it somewhere because i can't see the end of the slide okay thank you thank you very much or you can flash it once in a way but if you keep it permanently i'm not seeing the slide in there are 17 points and the whole concept is that so motto you should get all information and the way i was describing if we have paperless offices the way i look at it every evening all the work done in an office should be on the website so that any citizen can see it and if that happens that would be the limit of transparency and 50% of the rt applications seek information which should be available at the section 4 this is really the ideal of rti but only being looked at in terms of paying homage without implementing it next slide please next slide No, we are still on the same slide. We have not changed the slide. Thank you. Now, who should I ask for information? Fine, we know what is information, what is right to information, who has to give information. All public authorities. The law says every office of a public authority has to appoint what is called a public information officer. You don't have to worry. His name is what? You don't need to know anything. You only file an application. You think. consciously which public authority is likely to have the information that you want and which office if possible and you send an rt application to the public information officer at the office of a public authority and there the matter ends you are the badshah or begum of this nation you must get information because there has to be a public information officer what if the information is not with the public information officer but with other officers of the public authority the law says he must seek the assistance of other public servants and give you the information if the information is a completely different public authority let's say you must do it responsibly let's say you thought an information was with the police department so you applied to the police department public information officer so and so police station 
the actual information may be with the municipal authorities. Can the PIO refuse the RT application or reject it and send it back to you? The answer is no. You are the Macha of this nation or the queen of this nation. It is the public information officer's duty to transfer the RT application within five days to the public authority which is holding the information. It is their job, it is not your job. They cannot treat you like this. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, thank you. A person who desires to obtain any information under this act shall make a request in writing or through electronic means in English or Hindi or the official language of the area with the application is made. So, for example, in Gujarat, it would be Gujarati. In Tamil Nadu, it would be Tamil. There is no provision which says that the information must be provided in the language you seek. It can be given in any one of these three languages. An applicant making request for information shall not be required to give any reason or requesting the information or any other personal details except those that may be necessary for contacting him. This is extremely important. You need not give any reason for asking for information. A lot of government officers feel very annoyed. They say, Tumara ka, kya hai? Why uh, do you want the information? Information belongs to you. The government belongs to you and therefore it is your right. Also, I'd like to point out in the RTI law, no locus is required, no reason is required to be shown by the applicant. You own that and it must be given to you. Next, please. On receipt of a request under Section 6, a PR shall as expeditiously as possible and in any case within 30 days of the receipt of the request, either provide the information on payment of such fee as may be prescribed or reject the request for any of the reasons specified in Section 8 or 9. So the law categorically states rejection of an application can only be based on Section 8 or 9. There is some fee. There is an application fee generally which is 10 rupees in most states and most bodies, but in some places, the application fee is 20 rupees. Each state can fix its own fees. Then there may be the small fee for giving the information. For example, if the information that you seek is 200 pages, most states have fixed 2 rupees per page as the fee, but this can vary. Each state can make its own rules on this. Nationally, there can be no form. Nobody can say, come and take a form from here. Any plain piece of paper is your form. Some states have got formats. The central government has no format. Maharashtra, for example, has a format. So what the rules can give is only in terms of formats, collection of fees, and the actual fees to be charged. The, if the PIO fails, so therefore, supposing you file an RT application, the information that you are seeking is 200 pages, the PIO may write to you and say, Please pay 2 rupees per page, so 400 rupees, he must give you the calculation. And when you pay the fee, the information will be released to you. If PIO fails to give decision on the request for information within the period specified, which is 30 days, the PIO shall be deemed to have refused the request. And he must then give you the information free of any cost. Even if the information is 3,000 pages, the PIO cannot charge you 6,000 rupees. He has to give it to you free of any charge. Next. Next. Thank you. PIO must give details of further fees representing the cost of providing the information as determined by him together with the calculations made to arrive at the amount in accordance with fee prescribed as per the rules. And the period intervening the dispatch of the said intimation and payment of fees shall be excluded for the purpose of calculating the period of 30 days. When the PIO receives the RT application is day one, Supposing on the seventh day, he says this information is 300 pages, please pay 600 rupees. He sends the letter, the 30-day clock stops. You receive the letter, let's say, after five days. And you go and pay the fees after 10 days. After that, only will the 30-day clock start after you pay the fees. Person making requests for the information shall be provided the information free of charge where a public authority fails to comply with the 30-day limit. If it is beyond 30 days, the information has to be given to you without any initial charge. Next, please.
Yeah, the 30 day period, I want to clarify once again, it is calendar days, not working days. PIO receives RT application is day one. After X days, if PIO sends letter asking additional fees, 30 day clock stops. Additional fees paid, 30 day clock starts again. Information sent after Y days, X plus Y less than or equal to 30 days. If RT application is transferred to another public authority, in 35 days, you should get the information. Next, please. Now, I want to make it clear to you, RTI is a fundamental right of citizens. RTI is a fundamental right of citizens under Article 19.1a, which guarantees freedom of speech and expression. Various Supreme Court judgments have held that this includes right to information and right to publish. Therefore, three of our very important rights, right to speak, right to publish, and right to information, all fall under Article 19.1a of the Constitution. Therefore, your right to information is as important as somebody's right to speak, as, as important as somebody's right to publish a newspaper or put up a news channel. This is often forgotten and not understood that all three are at par and must be treated at par. Can there be any restrictions on our fundamental right? It has to be in the Constitution. Article 19.2 gives permissible restrictions on Article 19.1a. The only permissible restrictions are given in Article 19.2, which permits reasonable restrictions in the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of India, the security of the state, friendly relations with foreign states, public order, decency or morality, or in relation to contempt of court, defamation, or incitement to an offense. Beyond this, in other areas, your right cannot be restricted by any government or any authority. And Section 8.1 basically has to be interpreted with in conjunction with Article 19.2, if there is any doubt. Now we'll take a look at Section 8.1. Next slide, please. Exemption from disclosure of information, Section 8.1. Notwithstanding anything contained in this Act, there shall be no obligation to give any citizen information, disclosure of which would prejudicially affect the sovereignty and integrity of India, the security, strategic, scientific, or economic interests of the state, relation with foreign state, or lead to incitement of an offense. For example, if you sought some information which could lead to communal violence, this would not be given to you. The Indian Army is also part of a public authority, it's a public authority under the Act. So if you ask the Indian Army to tell you where the army formations are, or how many armaments they've got, or how many ammunition they've got, they would not give it to you because of exemption under Section 81A. But there has to be some plausible reasoning given as to how this section applies whenever rejecting information. 81B, information which has been expressly forbidden to be published by any court of law or tribunal, or the disclosure of which may constitute contempt of court. Lot of PIOs often refuse information saying, this is matter is sub judice, which is wrong. It is not as per the law. The lawmakers did not exempt information which is subjudice, but said that it has to be expressly forbidden to be published by any court of law. So if somebody refuses information saying it's exempt under 81B, ask him to show you a copy of the order by a court or tribunal saying this information cannot be parted with. Obviously understood is if a trial is under in camera, then the information will be denied to you because Everything in camera is supposed to be not exposed to public. 81C, information, the disclosure of which would cause a breach of privilege of parliament or legislature. What kind of information would this be? For example, if you sought budget papers before the budget is presented to parliament or state legislature, it would be denied to you saying this would be breach of privilege. Another class of information is various commissions of inquiry reports. But quite often it is frivolously refused. And let me give you an example in which I myself was involved. There's a very major other scam in Mumbai where a lot of scam had occurred. Because there was a lot of halabulu, the government appointed a commission of inquiry. The commission of inquiry was set up and after two years it gave the report. Now the commission of inquiry acts as that 
when the report is presented to the government it must be presented on the floor of the legislature or parliament within 6 months this was not done because names of ministers were there and very senior officials were there the government then did not present it to legislature but kept it under cupboard at the closed door i after 7 months i asked for a copy of that commission report the pio said this would be breach of privilege of legislature because the report has not been published before the state legislature i argued that this information must be given to me since within 6 months as per the law the information was to be presented to the legislature since it was not done breach of privilege had already occurred and therefore it should be given to me i had to go into the commission but i got the information the government placed the report on the floor of the legislature and gave it to me therefore remember all commissions of inquiry reports are yours after 6 months and must be given to you next slide please for our next slide please no this is the same slide next it should start with d yeah thank you h1 d information including commercial confidence trade secrets or intellectual property the disclosure of which would harm the competitive position of a third party there is a public interest override which we'll deal with later because it comes in h2 also to deny information for example supposing you were to ask the formulation of coca cola which may be with fda if that information was given to you that is of the nature of commercial confidence and it would hurt coca cola's competitive with interest but unless both conditions are satisfied it should be in the nature of commercial confidence and it should be shown that it will hurt somebody's competitive interest information has to be given to you for example bank of india for information relating to it can claim commercial confidence and say that it will hurt my competitive interest because it is in a competitive field air india can claim that but indian railways cannot because indian railways is no competition similarly after a tender is given this exemption cannot be applied before a tender is given it could hurt somebody's competitive interest it one e information available to a person is fiduciary relationship now there is a lot of confusion about fiduciary in a very simple terms quite often people say where it's an element relationship of trust this is not the only reason trust is one of the elements let me explain fiduciary relationship the traditional fiduciary relationships are doctor patient lawyer client banker customer these are the traditional fiduciary some of the there are others also what are the key elements of this somebody gives information regarding their transactions or their sales to somebody with superior knowledge of a particular topic expecting that that person will act in the interest of the person who is giving the information you go to a doctor lawyer banker you are giving information relating to yourself because you are expecting to get some advice in return or get some benefit in return the person to whom you give the information is legally obliged to only act in your interest and give you the information only and not share it with anybody else you have a choice of whom to go to you can choose your banker doctor lawyer in the case of most government cases you cannot have a choice of whom to go to you are fulfilling mostly a statutory duty when you give information to the government you also have trust in that person and there is no law forcing you to give the information whereas for example your passport application a job application with the government etc do not come under fiduciary relationship these are not fiduciary relationships at all f information received in confidence from foreign government note carefully the only place the word confidence or confidentiality is used is when information comes from a foreign government and the pio says this is given in confidence there is no further argument but otherwise no pio can say this information is confidential or this information is sensitive and hence will not be given no only when information is received from a foreign government 
For example, in the Rafal case, the government claimed that information was given by a foreign government in confidence and therefore they denied information. G. Information, the disclosure of which would endanger the life or physical safety of any person or identify the source of information or assistance given in confidence for law enforcement or security purposes. For example, if you've given some information to government or to police about somebody and that person seeks the information or anybody seeks that information, that would endanger your life or physical safety and therefore could be denied. Next slide, please. Yes. 81H. Information which would impede the process of investigation or apprehension or prosecution of offenders. Quite often, information is denied saying investigation shall not be information. Wrong. Parliament did not say when an investigation is ongoing, information shall not be given. Parliament only said that if it giving the information would impede the process of investigation. In 70% of the cases, the people seeking information regarding an investigation are those who have filed a complaint because they know that there is no progress on the complaint. And PIOs claim that investigation is ongoing. That is a wrong denial and illegal denial. The PI will have to show how it will impede. In most cases, when a complaint has been given by a complainant, this is completely false. Because a complaint is unlikely to impede the process of investigation. If anything, he is trying to pursue that. 81I. Cabinet papers including records of deliberations of the councils of ministers, secretaries and other officers. This is a very unique exemption. Provided that the decisions of the councils of ministers, the reasons thereof and the material on the basis of which the decisions are taken, shall be made public after the decision has been taken and the matter is complete or over. This is unique. Up to a certain point, the information is exempted until the decision is taken by the councils of ministers. These matters are exempted from disclosure. But once a decision is taken, the law requires that this should be put up so motto on its own before citizens. To give an example, when any bill is presented in parliament, it is first discussed within the cabinet and there is a note and there are various materials that are there. Until it is presented to parliament, it is exempt. But once the bill is presented in parliament within seven days or ten days, government must so about to put this on website so that citizens can discuss the pros and cons of a bill. You are the ruler, not the members of parliament. Members of parliament are there on your behalf and citizens must have a right to discuss provisions of any particular bill that the government intends to bring in. Next, please. J. This is the most popular exemption used by most PIOs and let's understand this carefully. Information which relates to personal information, the disclosure of which has no relationship to any public activity or interest or which would cause unwarranted invasion of the privacy of the individual unless PIO is satisfied. Larger public interest we'll deal with later. Provided that the information which cannot be denied to a parliament or state legislature shall not be denied to any person. What is the meaning of this law? Please understanding, whenever we are discussing a law, every word, every phrase has to be given some meaning to unless it will make complete nonsense of the law. If it is personal information, it may fall, may fall under 81J. Your name is personal, your age is personal, color of your hair is personal, your height is personal. A letter that you write is personal. Because who has written it? X person has written it. But all personal information is not exempted. Personal information, the disclosure of which has no relationship to any public activity or interest. Most information in government offices is the consequence of a public activity. You apply for a job, it's a public activity. You apply for a passport, it's a public activity. Therefore, this is not considered exempt or which would cause unwarranted invasion of the privacy of the individual. Now, here we are in a slightly funny position. What is privacy? The Puttaswami judgment has said privacy is a fundamental right of citizens. Fair enough. It's a 547-page judgment given by nine judges of the Supreme Court. Did you read the judgment? Nowhere does it tell you what, is, what constitutes privacy. So, therefore, 
it's very difficult to figure out the, they've given lots of theories, lot of hypotheses, lot of philosophy, but they've not said what constitutes privacy. Therefore, how is a poor PIO to decide what is privacy? An individual may claim everything is private. Therefore, an acid test was given to this. I would say you should look at it from the aspect of Article 19.2. Article 19.2, which permits some reasonable restrictions on your fundamental right under Article 19.1a, has only two words which would be covered in privacy, decency or morality. If it would violate decency or morality, then it comes in the domain of privacy. Therefore, an acid test was given to the PIO. Provided that the information which cannot be denied to parliament or state legislature shall not be denied to any person. Therefore, anybody, public information officer, first appellate authority, commissioner or judge, who says this information falls under Section 8.1J must make a subjective assessment that they would not give this information to parliament or state legislature. If giving the information or disclosing the information is likely to violate decency or morality, it must not be given to parliament and therefore it must not be given to a citizen also. But without this such a declaration, the denial of information is not as per the law and this is an illegal denial of information. Section 8.2 says, notwithstanding anything in the Official Secrets Act, nor any of the exemptions permissible in accordance with Section 1, a public authority may allow access to information if public interest in disclosure outweighs the harm to the protected interest. Therefore, if there is a larger public interest, despite an exemption, in, you may, the information may be given. But please understand, there is no need to demonstrate any public interest in seeking for information because it belongs to you. Unless it falls under Section 81A to J, and it can be demonstrated that it falls under that, otherwise information must be given to you. If it falls under the exemptions, then you have to demonstrate that there is a larger public interest in disclosure. To give an example, Nira Modi's accounts, with, which are Punjab National Bank, I think. If you sought information on that, normally it would be denied under the exemption under Section 81E, claiming it's fiduciary. But you could well argue that there is a large public fraud that has occurred, and therefore there is a larger public interest in disclosure. That would be a matter of discussion and debate. But it's an argument that could well be made. Larger public interest has to be shown only when an exemption is established. If no exemption is established, no local standing, no public interest needs to be demonstrated. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Supposing PIO rejects your information request and you believe it is not a legitimate reason for refusing information or PIO does not respond to you at all, which can also happen. In 30 days, if you do not get any response from the PIO, it's a deemed refusal. You can file a first appeal to a first appellate authority within 30 days. How do I know who the first appellate authority is? The law requires the PIO to inform you details of the first appellate authority when responding to you. But if he's not responded or he does not tell you how do you file a first appeal? The very simple technique is to frame a first appeal to the first appellate authority, care of public information officer so to the same public information officer and say that the law requires you to intimate me who the first appellate authority is. If you have not done it, now it's your responsibility to forward it to the first appellate authority. A first appeal can be filed for not getting information, incomplete information or wrong information. What is wrong information? Let me repeat. As per records, if it is wrong, whether the actual fact may be different, but if the record says something, it's a record based on which the information is to be given. First appellate authority should decide in 30 days, but he can also extend by 15 days if there are special reasons. If result of first appeal not satisfactory, file second appeal to the commission within 90 days. I repeat, if the first appellate authority has given you no response within 45 days, you can file a second appeal to the commission saying the first appellate authority is not responded within the day time required. Section 19.5 is very important. It says, onus on PIO, the denial of information was justified. In any appeal proceedings before a first appellate authority or a commission, as per law, you need not justify why you need the information. The PIO is to justify why he is denying information. 
However, in actual practice, it is useful to explain that the denial was not as per law because very few people stick by this. But that is the legal provision. Next, please. Section 20 is the teeth of the Act. This is the reason why the Act works. If information denied without reasonable cause, Commission must penalize the PIO, deemed PIO at rupees 250 per day of delay after giving an opportunity of explaining. Maximum penalty rupees 25,000. Commission can also recommend disciplinary action against the officer and compensation to be paid to the applicant. This is the real teeth of the Act. Commissioners, whenever they see unreasonably information being denied, must impose penalties. And if penalties are imposed, the threat of a penalty makes a PIO work properly. This is a unique provision in this law, which, because the citizen was denied their fundamental right, makes a public servant pay from his or her salary. This penalty has to be paid by the public servant from their salary. It is not from government. Today, if a, if a major problem occurs and 100,000 people collect and demonstrate, the maximum that will happen to a public servant who could have violated some law is that he or she gets transferred. Whereas here is the law which says that the citizen, the ruler of this nation, his or her right was not properly adhered to and therefore the public servant is liable to pay a personal penalty up to 25,000 rupees. Next. Next slide, please. Section 22. This is very important to understand. The provisions of this Act shall have effect notwithstanding anything inconsistent therewith contained in the Official Secrets Act and any other law for the time being in force or in any instrument having effect by virtue of any law other than this Act. Nobody can say, as per Supreme Court rules, this information shall not be given. As per company law, this information shall not be given. As per Income Tax Act, all laws are overridden by this law as far as giving of information is concerned. Nobody can say Official Secrets Act says this information cannot be parted. This law, as far as giving of information is concerned, overrides all other laws and rules and therefore is paramount and therefore it makes RTI a very simple law. Otherwise, you would get into the legal tangle saying companies law says this, income tax act says this, passport law says this. This act clearly says it overrides all laws as far as giving of information is concerned. Next, please. Appeals. Just to explain once again, to file an RT application, information must be obtained in 30 days. If no information provided or unsatisfactory response, First appeal to be filed within 30 days of response or 60 days in case of no response. First appellate authority must give an order after giving you a hearing within 45 days. If unsatisfactory order or no response, second appeal to the commission within 90 days. If PIO does not give you information, please do not approach the commission directly because the appeal is likely to be sent back. You must first go to the first appeal and then to the second appeal. Next, please. Now, this is a format for application for Maharashtra. Other states will have different formats. Central government has no format, so any plain piece of paper would do. You could follow this format in places where no format is there. This is linked to an interesting story on the right to information. When the act came, there was a young boy from Vidarbha who came to Mumbai looking for a job. Where did he stay? He stayed in a hut with his uncle. While he was going around, there was a RTI workshop being held in the Basti. He had nothing to do, so he sat down, understood that any plain piece of paper is his form. He needs to put, give a 10 rupee application. In Maharashtra, the simplest way is to buy a 10 rupee court fee stamp and stick it on the RTI application. In the central government, no court fee stamp would work, an Indian postal order of 10 rupees would work. Anyway, he understood what is information. Information is what is on record. He understood that information can only be denied if it falls in the exemptions of Section 8.1. Having understood all this, he moved on. He got a job somewhere and then he needed a ration card. So he applied for a ration card. 
He gave the application at the counter. As he was going out of the door, the pure accosted him and said, "Tu ko ration card chahiye kya?" He said, "Ha, bhai, isliye to form bara." The pure said, "Chai pani lagega." This boy said, "Thik hai, aapko chai pila dunga." The pure said, "Chai pani ka matlab chai nahi hota hai." So he said, "Fir kya matlab hai?" The pure said, "Two thousand rupees dena padega, tab aapko ration card milega." This boy, without batting an eyelid, made a statement that always makes me feel very proud. He said, "Main ghost nahi dunga. I shall not give a bribe." The pure shrugged. He said, "Villager coming from village, he doesn't know how big cities work. He chappal gis jayenge. Tumko ration card nahi milega. Tum jao jao. Tumko ration card nahi mil sakta hai." This boy went back. He checked in the basti from others who were applying for. Ration cards and realized that most of them were paying a bribe, getting their ration card in about 40, 45 days. For three months, this boy did nothing. After three months, he filed his RT application, saying what? I had given an application for a ration card on 6 August 2006. Photocopy of receipt attached. I want the following information about the progress in the following format. Next, please. Date on which application received, name and designation of the officer receiving it, action taken, date on which forwarded to the next officer. If there are as many rows as the number of officers who handled the complaint. Number two, I want the list of ration cards issued in the last two months, giving the dates on which the application made and the dates on which the ration cards were issued. Now, what could the PIO tell him? कि आपका एप्लीकेशन तो एक ही टेबल पे पड़ा है क्योंकि चाय पानी नहीं दिया ऐसा तो लिख के नहीं दे सकते थे नेक्स्ट डे प्यून केम टू हिज हाउस एंड सेड आपको सामने बुलाया है दिस बॉय वेंट टू द रैशनिंग ऑफिस एज सुन एज द ऑफिसर सो आई एम द ऑफिसर सेट अरे अरे इनके लिए एक कुर्सी ले आओ और इनका राशन कार्ड ले आओ और एक कप चाय और एक गिलास पानी ले आओ He did not give chai pani. He got chai pani instead, and he got the ration card. And to me, that one cup of tea and one glass of water is more than a cup of tea. It is respect to the sovereign nation of the sovereign of this nation. That is the respect that he got. RTI, in my opinion, it gets you information. It can curb corruption. Yes, all that is things. Yes, but more than anything else, it empowers the average citizen of this nation, and that is what it is meant to do. Get respect. If I am a citizen. Without that respect, it has no meaning. I must deserve respect because I am a human being, and that is the purpose of the Right to Information Act. Next, please. Ne yeah. Okay. Now this is an interesting case where I filed an RT application, and I'll tell you the story of this. On one day. on times of india first page i saw a photograph of people demonstrating at a place called marine drive in mumbai because one police constable wore and raped a minor people were demonstrating rightly so on the same day on page 5 there was a small news item the small news item said one police inspector prakash avri of mumbai police had raped a minor the evidence was clear and police inspector prakash avri had been suspended the case went to court the police could not establish the case in the court and inspector prakash avri was acquitted and this news item said police inspector prakash avri suspension had been revoked and he was being reinstated in service we read things like this we all feel angry i also felt angry and i said what can i do let me use right to information therefore i said the period to which information relates last one here description of the information required next next slide please according to a news report in the times of india dated 20th april 06 inspector prakash avare was accused of raping a minor in september 2005 he was acquitted by the sessions court in february and has been reinstated in service I want a Xerox copy of the order reinstating him, along with the notings based on when the decision was taken. I asked for information. I did not say why did you put him. I want the papers based on which he was reinstated. The PIO refused, so I filed a first appeal, which I'd like to share with you. Next, please.
to first separate authority, deputy commissioner of police, etc. The grounds for appeal, facts of the case. I had asked for information regarding the reinstatement of Inspector Prakash Havre as per the attached application. Next. The PIO first sent me a letter stating that the information will be provided by Bhaikala Police Station. PIO Bhaikala replied by his letter of so-and-so that the information could not be provided as it was exempt under Section 81H, which exempts information which would impede the process of investigation or apprehension of prosecution of vendors. Grounds for appeal. The PIO is not shown how providing the information could impede any investigation. In fact, no investigation is being held since Prakash Avare has been reinstated. The rejection is without any basis in law. I went for the hearing. There's a very good police officer, and I'm telling you this story because there are a lot of good government officers, but we need to do something to make them activate, to activate them, to help them to do the right thing also. This was a very good deputy commissioner of police, and this was much before I became a commissioner. I was just an average citizen. So he said, uh, Mr. Gandhi, what could we do? The court has acquitted him. I said, sir, I'm not asking you why you are reinstated. I'm only asking for the reasons on record. Some officer must have signed off saying reinstated. But he said, no, Mr. Gandhi, what, what are you trying to do? I said, sir, look, from my perspective, there are two possibilities. A, Prakash Avare is guilty. If Prakash Avare is guilty, reinstating him is great disservice to the citizens, to police, and to the nation. Alternately, I concede he may be innocent and was then he was framed by somebody. He was framed by somebody, action should be taken against any person. How can this be like Jessica? Nobody killed Jessica Lal. Murder hoya or kuchwari. This deputy commissioner of police saw the point I was making and he said, Mr. Gandhi, let me see what I can do. In 20 days, I got it officially in writing from the police commissioner's office that police inspector Prakash Avri had been dismissed from service. That is the power of right to information that any citizen can exercise. Any young girl of 10, 12, or a young boy of 10, 15 years sitting in a hut can ask for information. And if this supports a good government officer, things will happen, things will change. Every time when an RT application is filed, does this happen? Do you get information? Does it become effective? The answer is no, I'll be lying if I said that. From my own experience, in 50% of the cases, if there is some serious issue, they will try and duck. But overall, my own analysis is that in about one third of the cases, some small change occurs in the governance structure. Small. Sometimes they may not give you the information, but they realize that we must not repeat such a wrong thing. And therefore, in future, they will not repeat that. One third of the cases. What is it that I want to share with you? A simple dream. If 30, a survey of mine shows that all Indian citizens crip for three to four hours every month about what is wrong. Minister is wrong, so and so is wrong, the police is like this, the municipal authorities are like this, the panchayat is like this, so on and so forth. Cripping changes nothing, it can change nothing. My submission is if cribbing is good for your mental and physical health, continue cribbing. Take a while to file one RT application once a month on a matter that you feel is wrong. It may affect you, may not affect you. If 30 lakh Indian citizens took such a while, there will be three and a half crore RT applications every year. If 30% of that, as I was explaining, Result in some change. File the RT application. If you file like filing an appeal, do it. Even if you don't, it has an impact. If 30% of this has an impact, one crore times a year, we will make a small impact on the government and governance. In five years' time, we can change the face of India. We can change the face of governance. We can curb, curb a lot of corruption. The right is with us. We've got to use it. If we don't use it, it's useless. If you use it and put pressure on the system to give us information, to correct its wrongs, just by getting information, we can make a huge change to the whole way. One old man in one meeting where I was explaining the right to information said, Mr. Gandhi, he got up and said, Mr. Gandhi, 
मैंने बहुत कंप्लेन किया मैंने बहुत आरटीआई किया पांच साल तक किया कुछ होता नहीं है इंडिया में कुछ होने वाला ही नहीं है इंडिया ऐसा ही रहने वाला है ऐसा ही चलने वाला है टू गो पीपल आई से मेनी ऑफ आस गो टू मंदिर मस्जिद गुरुद्वारा चर्चेज अग्यारीस वंस डे वंस वीक मे बी वंस मंथ और वंस अ ईयर and you go there and come out we don't have an extra 100 rupee note in our wallet then why do we go there we go there as an act of faith we have faith that by doing this something good will happen to me my family my nation my society it's a clear act of faith there is no logical connection you can establish there is here you can see a logical connection that by filing an rt application there is a possibility of some change coming people who want to do the right thing in government getting support that possibility is there what do we do for the nation as an act of faith zero let us try this an act of faith for the nation it's our nation and if we don't change it nobody else will if we wait for a masiha to change things it will not happen our government will be changed by the bachas and begums of this nation and the responsibility is yours and mine as individuals and we can work as individuals we need not come together in form associations form complex structures you and i have the ability the right to do this and the duty to do this if we don't nothing else will change there is a lot of talk of nationalism and patriotism nowadays jhande ke samne khade raho jalagan mein lagao those are useful symbols but even if full day we sat before the we stood in front of the national flag and sang janaganamana nothing in india will change these are useful symbols i'm not saying we should do it these are good symbols but beyond that we need to do something concrete as citizens of this nation and right to information is one important tool you can do something else also but please focus on saying i need to change the government i need to improve the government only you and i can do it otherwise it will not change we we'll keep cribbing our next generation will keep cribbing next slide please next slide uh the summary of central government the summary of the central government application fee 10 rupees court fees have not valid no fees you can make an online rt applications for the central government for maharashtra government and one of the other state governments i think karnataka has started this also now please pressurize your government persuade your government to start an rti online portal so that you can file an rt application online online you just sit in your own home file the application and pay 10 rupees or 20 rupees or whatever the fee by credit card or atm or some such means next slide please mera bharat maha hum log bolte hain kehte hain tempo trucks ke piche likhte hain we don't really believe it do we and therefore i say next slide मेरा भारत महान नहीं है मेरा भारत महान नहीं है नेक्स्ट पर ये दोष मेरा है आई द इंडिविजुअल सॉवरिन ऑफ दिस नेशन आई एम रिस्पॉन्सिबल हम सबकी जिम्मेदारी है कि ये देश बेहतर बने अगर हम नहीं करेंगे तो कोई नहीं करेगा ओनली यू एंड आई कैन डू इट राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन इज एन एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी इंपॉर्टेंट टूल इट्स अ टूल इट विल नॉट डू एनीथिंग बाई इट सेल्फ बट इफ सिटीजन यूज इट एक्टिवली because they want a better nation because they want a better india india will change and we will get the democracy that we desire the swaraj that we aim for thank you very much friends thank you any questions discussions doubts any contrary views i'd be glad to take them we will now be taking questions you may pose your questions in the chat box
we have not received any questions from the audience we will conclude the session sir okay thank you yes sir uh how is it today yes sir uh there are 40 okay nobody has any questions yes sir okay good i hope all okay we know. have one question coming from we have one question coming in from gauri shankar m sir i have requested the tamil nadu electricity board to change my house current unit kilowatts but the officials didn't take any strict action can i file an rti to know why the process is not done my submission is file an rti asking for how your application moves and asking just like the ration card example similar thing is used when nobody is acting on a complaint or you want an income tax refund or nobody is sitting on an application you must have made an application so ask for how that application moved ask for file notings etc that is likely to yield results we have another question coming in from gayatri sir what do you think about the recent amendment that has been made to the rti does it give more power to the central government uh well okay i am also opposed to amendments our rti act is one of the best in the world and does not need any amendments having said that let me be fair and also point out that all that the government has done it is not right but all that the government has done is they have not changed the exemptions they have not taken away any of the commission's rights or powers what they have done is they have said they will fix the salaries and the perquisites and the position of the commissioners it's an unfortunate thing they have done they have downgraded the commissioners a little which has been done perhaps for certain other political reasons instead of going into that but and this is something i would like to highlight the supreme court of india has actually grossly misinterpreted the law so that the law is getting constricted far more than the amendments could make an impact on the law i'm hoping okay. citizens like you will learn the law understand the law and then pressurize so that people have to interpret it in the right manner as per the constitution of india as per the rti act once an act of parliament is made by parliament that is supreme we are generally cribbing and complaining about our members of parliament complaining about our political class here is an act which is one of the best acts in the world we are not implementing it properly we are grossly mis the supreme court in particular is grossly misinterpreting it and so are the commissioners we need to build pressure and interpret the law in the right manner treating it as a fundamental right of citizens satyam trivedi asked what is the difference between an rti and a pil in a pil you are asking the court to issue instructions or directions here you are only seeking information there is a vital difference in rti you are not actually seeking any action you only seeking information sometimes an action may occur because of the rti because somebody realizes something wrong has been done but the pil asks for direction on the other hand the pil is a fairly expensive and a very long drawn out process a pil can go up to a few years relatively rti is a very cheap process sometimes it leads to desired actions but strictly speaking the rti only gives you entitlement to get information uh shri gayatri asks the rti bill was not placed for public consultation what is your take on it sir the rti bill was put up to public consultation i think the amendment she means yes sir uh, the amendment yes it should not put up that's why it's very wrong i i generally believe 
bills must not be passed in parliament there was no great panic hurry as i said i my own analysis into some of the political reasons were behind this by okay let me share it with you i believe they were trying to establish whether they would get a majority in the rajya sabha or not earlier parliament they brought the triple talaq bill which got rejected the rajya sabha so they did not want it to get rejected this was a test balloon to see whether they can get it passed in the rajya sabha but it was wrong to do it like this i strongly believe most bills unless there is an emergency should be put up before public with the reasons and public must get an opportunity to discuss and debate this this was a bad decision this was a small blow at our democratic rights we have a question from chandra veni what is the final authority to decide any matter whether it comes under the rti or not by law the final authority is uh, the information commission now the law also has a provision which says no appeal can be made against the, the decision making in the rti except through the law and the law provides only a final appeal before the commission but these decisions do get challenged before high courts now this is a very peculiar situation between an appeal and a writ there is a difference in law and hari vishnu kamath supreme court judgment defines what a writ is however most challenges to the commission's decisions are accepted by the high court by just labeling it as a writ which is unfortunate so theoretically the final appeal lies with the commission in practice it lies with the high court and then the supreme court uh gauri shankar asked can i file an rti against the officials to know why they didn't take action on my application if there is not any possibility to remove the responsible authority for not doing their service I, as i repeat you will seek records so ask for what happened and that may give you evidence that nothing was done then you will have to go through a complaint rti is not a complaint forum strictly speaking as i said sometimes it does the impact people feel if there is a good officer a good officer acts accordingly or they feel that it will reveal their wrong actions on paper but what you will see is only paper you cannot seek redress in legally speaking okay uh there are many legis legislations made in india though it provides a remedy to the aggravated person its implementation needs to be still more effective do you think this law is implements in an effective manner though the law is being implemented very poorly compared to its provisions and the hope that it had is being implemented very poorly and the reasons are simple a information commissioner selection is a very poor there's no process in fact most information commissioners are selected as an act of political patronage or bureaucratic networking most of the commissioners have no affinity for transparency they have no credibility no inclination for transparency and this is true incidentally this is true not just of information commission this is also true of human rights commissioner women's commission children's commission lok aayog all these which is a very major problem with our democracy we need to get proper criteria fixed we need to get a transparent process of selection we need to get right people in these positions these are our checks and balance of democracy which don't work having said that what is the solution the solution i repeat is for citizens to raise their voices and say we want a better process of selecting commissioners we want accountability from the commissioners all these commissioners and various other people to give a simple example right now most state commissions have stopped it, having hearings because of the lockdown we been suggesting and proposing and saying look you can do it you are sitting i don't know where and the participants could be in different parts of the country we are all communicating 
a hearing for a RTI appeal can also be done in an absolutely identical manner. Central Commission and some commissions are doing a little bit, and that's as if they are doing a big favor. We need to bring pressure and say that if commissions and quasi judicial bodies do not hold hearings by using web devices, whatever, there are lots of platforms available Zoom, WhatsApp, various things then the principal no work, no pay should apply to them. This is necessary. But as I said, it needs citizens to bring pressure. Otherwise, people get away with whatever they want. Aishwarya Bindu from Price Academy Institute of Bengaluru asks, Sir, can I file RTI for examination board for photocopy of answer papers? Absolutely. In fact, on this, there is a very famous Supreme Court decision in the what's called the Aditya Bandopadhyay case. Answer sheets are definitely covered in, as information and there is a Supreme Court ruling also to back that. So, there is no reason why it should not be given. It must be given in 30 days. Only thing I'd like to point out is do it as soon as the results are out. Because some bodies claim that they destroy the answer sheets after a month or so. So I'm not very sure. If it's destroyed, information is what is available. So therefore, it would, if you want to ask for an answer sheet, ask for it within five or ten days of getting the result. If I presume you want to check your answer sheet to see that if the result was right or not, or the marking was right. We have a final question coming in from Satyam Trivedi. Can I file an RTI to our college fees? If your college is substantially financed by government, the answer is yes. If it's a deep university, then the answer is yes. But if it's a private college, the answer is no. Uh, he Pratibha Singh asks, well, there are never-ending PIL which are filed unheard due to lack of management. Don't you think we need more courts and qualified judicial persons to sort out all the pending cases in the court? Uh, in fact, that's one of my favorite topics. I give talks on this. Uh, day after tomorrow, I'm giving a talk on this. What I've seen is, and it, it's amazing, it's counterintuitive. If you take data from the Reserve Supreme Court website, I've taken data for 12 year period. And each year I assume that the average rate of disposal of the judges, the, the truth is we have enough sanction positions of judges. But over that 12 year period, 11% of the Supreme Court judges positions were kept vacant. 21% of the subordinate courts were kept vacant and 32% of the high court judges' positions were kept vacant. There is no reason to keep this vacant. If those judicial positions had been filled, in six or seven years, the entire backlog would have finished. And that can still happen. No attention is being paid to such governance issues by citizens, media or the government. It's unfortunate. You are completely right. The right to speedy justice, Supreme Court says, is a fundamental right which is violated day in and day out in our courts. And there's a very simple solution. Have no more than 5% vacancies in sanction positions and the problem is easily solvable. We have another question. Sir, does public-private partnership companies or firms come under the RTI Act? Absolutely dead right. All public-private partnerships, by definition, are a partnership between the public and the private. Therefore, there is substantial government finance in all of these public-private partnerships, either in terms of money or in terms of rights or in terms of land. They, otherwise, it will not be a public-private partnership. By definition, in fact, when I was a commissioner, I had proposed to the chief commissioner and the commissioner had sent a note to the then planning commission chairman and said that we suggest that you make this as one of the standard clauses which should go in all public private partnership agreements. Unfortunately, they did not agree. But I still believe by definition, all public private partnerships 
it's a partition with government. And government is who? You and I are the government. Therefore, they come under RTI by law. Yes, sir. We have no more questions coming in from the audience. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on this webinar. Thank you so much for taking your time out and being with us on this Thursday evening. Thank you. It Thanks was wonderful to have you. I do use RTI. And even if you don't use RTI, start believing that you are the Bacha of Vega of this nation. Then our nation will change. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank so you much. sir. We come to the end of the session. For more information on certificate courses conducted by Law Essential, log on to www.lawessential.in. Thank you all for attending the session. Thank you, sir.